Let's talk about why we're here today, and that is the creation of the Schwarzman College of Computing here. Um, Steve, this is a big gift. You personally gave $350 million. It's a billion dollars that's being put to use, but why did you do this? You're, you're not affiliated with MIT. This is not your alma mater. Uh, what happened? Well, Raphael's very convincing, uh, so, so uh, that, that's one reason. But the, what's really driving me is that um, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, quantum computing, machine learning, robotics, all of these new uh, technologies are going to change the world. Now, people say things like that from time to time, and it doesn't really happen. This is going to happen. It's happening already, and it's going to be profound. And what's important uh, is that the U.S. be competitive uh, on a global basis, uh, and that's part of the reason that I did the gift. Uh, but it's also important that these technologies be introduced uh, in a sensible way. Uh, it's called ethical uh, issues, work, workforce issues, because the opportunities for large unemployment uh, exist if you just dump these technologies uh, into the system. Uh, and in that way, and it's a, a somewhat different analogy, you, you control you know, like nuclear uh, power and other things, uh, with nuclear, you're going to have to have some rules of the road, uh, sensible introductions, things you won't allow the technology to do, or at least schedule it. And, and those are global issues as well as U.S. issues. So the, the, this, is, this, this is sort of the challenge uh, of the next 10 to 20 years. And at the same time, um, it's going to lead to improvements of, of enormous magnitude. So it's, it's, it's the new world, and, and we're in it, even if people don't know it. There's so much that, it's a, there's a lot that we can go through in that answer. But let's start first with just the competitive nature, because we think of the United States as being the, the leader in just about every uh, scientific and computer edge on these issues. But there has been a lot of talk lately, uh, a 60 Minutes report kind of suggesting that, that China is potentially going to take over when it comes to AI, and that in some levels they are ahead of us. What, what do you think of that? Well, you know, there's different types of uh, evolution. What's important is, is this type of technology with other countries has more what you call industrial policy. Their government is helping uh, their universities, their companies. We have a pretty remarkable ecosystem, if you will. We have great companies that are active uh, in these areas. Uh, the U.S. government hasn't been, you know, particularly active, uh, which is, which has got to change. Uh, and the universities we have here are without peer. Uh, they need more money going into this field. So, so part of this is coordinate. Uh, a U.S. Uh, response, uh, and if we can do that, which is what I'm interested in, uh, you know, I live here, uh, that, um, uh, that, that we can re-energize re what we're doing. We're already doing a lot of really great things, mm -hmm. but there's a lot more that can be done if we get government, universities, and our companies appropriately coordinated. Uh, Raphael, let's talk about what you're doing with this, because you're not just taking this and creating a few extra professorships or changing a few departments. You're actually changing the entire setup of MIT. It's, this has been called the biggest change to the university structure since the 1950s. What, what are you doing? What's different with this? Well, let me just start with what Steve said. The world is changing and rapidly, and the world is actually demanding a different kind of graduate, and I call those graduates bilinguals graduates who are who come and study whatever they wish to study finance engineering science economics whatever that is but who also are very familiar with using these kinds of new tools computing and ai tools to practice their profession i think that is what the world needs that's what our students recognize the world needs and that's what we're creating here so the idea of creating a college and the schwarzman college of computing is a great example of what that could be and should be, is that we are integrating into all the disciplines we have 
those computing and AI tools. So every student here, no matter what he or she majors in, will be very comfortable using these new tools to practice their profession. That's the key thing that I'm doing. In academia, how, how does that work in practice? Um, in academia, schools, uh, and we have five of them, basically are designed to advance the discipline within their school. They are self-contained units, and, and, and basically that's how they become successful. And that's typical in academia, that's here as well. The way the college is structured is basically almost like an inter-school school. So it's advancing computing and AI, but it also uh, has as a charge to integrate, to help integrate the, those uh, tools into the, the other curriculum of all the majors and to receive feedback about how those tools are being used so we can advance them better and faster. Uh, let, let's get to the question of ethics and, and how you do this uh, in an ethical manner in terms of promoting AI. There are a lot of concerns, Steve, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. that, uh, that people will lose their jobs to the computers or to the robots or to the machines. Um, there are also concerns that we don't quite understand what artificial intelligence can do. You have people like Elon Musk or Bill Gates who have said that this could be uh, the end of the world uh, because <laughs> the computers get there fast and decide they don't like <laughs> us necessarily being the ones who stick around. Around. How do you handle all of that and make sure that, again, this is being done in a thoughtful and ethical manner? Well, I think, let me just say this much. I do not believe that AI will mean the end of humanity. Uh, I, I, I don't think that will happen. Regardless, uh, I think, I think it, it is, it's hopefully good news, uh, if, if you believe what I believe. But I think that the key point here is that it's important that we study that, that we study how it is that we're going to develop the technology in a way that we can deploy it in an ethical way so that we don't make mistakes. The, this whole technology, as Steve said, is extremely powerful. And if we just advance it without imagining or thinking the negative consequences, we are in to make big mistakes. So all these things have to go together. As we advance the technology, we have to recognize how, what's the right way of deploying it, what is the ethics of using it properly, what are the policies that we can use it properly. That all has to go together. There, there have been some protests, students, uh, some professors who have said that they're not in favor of this. What has your response been to them? That they, they, they don't want big business basically involved with this. They don't want artificial intelligence. What do you say to them? Well, I. I if the protests are about stopping the advances of AI, uh, I don't know that protests can stop it. And, and, and it's not about MIT advancing it, the whole world is moving. So just having an institution or even a nation stopping it is not going to make a difference. Things will move. I think the important issue right now is, as Steve said, is how do we deploy it the right way? Uh, technologies really reflect the values of the individuals who develop them and the individuals have the values of the culture they live in. So, so the issue is what kind of humanity we're going to have as we develop these technologies. And that's why all these have to be integrated together.